I'm a 45-year-old single father of three. Their mom died 10 years ago. I have three sons, Andrew, nearly adult, Connor, teen, and Max, younger teen. Connor was born female. He's trans. He came out as trans five years ago and has now socially transitioned, not yet physically. My sister, 38, just got married. My sons and I were invited. My family has known that Connor is trans for two years now. Some have adjusted well, some not so much. My sister is pretty indifferent about it. Her wedding was well organized to the last detail. She wanted all the men to wear shirt and tie and the women sundresses. I texted her a picture of our outfits the day before the wedding and she said, Where's Nia's dress? I was a bit surprised and told her not to dead name my son and that he'll be wearing a shirt and tie like the rest of the men there or we aren't coming. She said, Fine, and that was it. At the reception, my sister got mad that Connor was wearing a tie but didn't say much after that. When we sat down at our table, the and me card said Nia. I went to my sister and she said she used their real name. I told her the boys and I were leaving and she told me, don't you dare cause a scene at my wedding. Nia can be a guy any other day. I called her a bigger and we left. My family says I ruined her wedding. Not the idiot. Long con idea though, she got married, right? She was Miss Smith, let's say. Now she's Mrs. Jones, right? So conveniently forget the Jones and call her Smith. I mean, that's what you've known her as your whole life, so it's hard to change what you've called someone their entire life, even if they prefer you call them something else. He can be a man any other day? What a ridiculous thing to say! Well, sister theoretically could be an idiot any other day too, yet here we are. Good for you for standing up to her in support of your son. With an attitude like that, I'm sure the sister will be a bride again before long, so ruining this wedding was no big issue. Connor is a man every day, went to bed yesterday a man, and woke up today a man. No one is calling into question whether or not Connor is a man except for the sister, and the only one making a scene of it is the sister. All she needs to do today, as she should be every day, is show Connor a modicum of respect and not dead naming him. This is specifically targeting the OP's son for being trans because I bet if one of the cis guests had a preference to being called by, e.g., a middle name, they'd have no problem accommodating that. Your sister isn't indifferent to your son being trans. Nobody accepting or even indifferent would repeatedly use a dead name. Honestly, in your opinion, I'd just cut her out. She should have respected your son's identity if she wanted you at her wedding. Yeah, I can't believe a wedding was ruined because a couple of people left the reception early. Opie said this happened when he saw the seating card, which means the ceremony would already be over. A million things could force a family to leave a wedding early. For example, kids not feeling well, unrelated emergency, schedule conflict, something going on the next day they need to get to sleep or prepare for, etc. Not everyone stays at a wedding till the venue closes down, and while the rest of the family probably notice the bride's brother is missing at some point, it's still a sign of a bad reception if four people leave ruins it. OP has a family of drama queens and control freaks. He should ignore them all. My wife and I have two kids, Jaden, tween male, and Amelia, pre-K female, but she has a son from a previous relationship, Kian, nearly adult male. Kian does not have a strict visiting schedule, but we see him most weekends. Both of our kids are obsessed with their big brother, especially Jaden. Kian was never too fond of Jaden, and Jaden's obsession with him has only made it worse. It's hard for me because I hate seeing my son feel rejected, but I understand why Kian doesn't appreciate his behavior. Unfortunately, Jaden is constantly glued to his side and will rush into Kian's room at any hour of the day or night. Of course, we've tried to teach Jaden that if he wants Kian's attention, he has to knock on the door the same he would if it were our room, but he gets very overly excited and forgets. Also, Kian has become reluctant to bring friends or girlfriends over because Jaden never leaves them alone and has to barricade the door with his shoes if he's changing after a shower. He has also considered not spending the night here because Jaden will wake him early in the morning and insist they play outside. Of course, my wife and I continue to tell Jaden how inappropriate this is. Still, Jaden's room is downstairs and Kian is in the basement while my wife Amelia and I are upstairs, so we're not always aware of Jaden's intrusions. My wife thinks that this is mostly Kian's fault. He's a brilliant big brother to Amelia, but often pushes Jaden away and has never been very interested in him. So my wife thinks that if he makes more effort, Jaden will stop this. I, on the other hand, doubt that while Jaden is ignoring all of his boundaries, Kian will want to spend time with him. Recently, Kian helped me clear the garage at my late father's house. 
While there, we spoke about the Jaden issue and he told me that things would be so much easier if he had a lock on his door. I remember how important privacy was to me as a teenager, so I agreed. I had to buy paintbrushes anyway, so while I was out, I purchased Kian a lock, which we fitted to the door. That was over a week ago, but it was only last night that my wife realized when she saw Jaden throwing things at Kian's door, demanding to get in. She was furious that I was encouraging her son to lock us out of his life and said it was a safety hazard. I thought this was the best solution until we could convince Jaden to behave more appropriately. I promised we've tried everything and we haven't given up. This is not a shortcut to parenting Jaden, but it seemed like the only way to convince Kian to continue to visit regularly. Am I the idiot? Edit. My father, his grandfather, recently died, and he and Jaden were close, so his school counselor thinks that this clingy behavior may be related to his grief in some way. He's been spoken to about this by the counselor a few times, and she can't find any other reason for it. Not the idiot. The situation is getting intolerable for Kian, and the fact that you understood this and responded to it is something Kian will remember forever. Jaden needs to learn boundaries. Even with the lock on the door, Jaden is throwing things and trying to get in. I don't know what's going on, but at that age, Jaden should be understanding boundaries. Agree. At his age, he's plenty old enough to understand and respect boundaries. I don't buy that Jaden just gets excited and forgets, especially when his reaction to not getting his way is to chuck things at Kian's door and throw a tantrum. He knows it's not allowed, but he keeps doing it because pushing his way in gets him what he wants. Do you think he forgot about the knocking rule when he decided to throw things at Kian's door because mommy will let him get his way? I bet she knows way more about all the intrusions than she lets on. She just doesn't care. Mom getting upset at Kian's locking them out of his life makes me suspect Jaden is getting some of his sense of entitlement to other people's space from her. Jaden just lost his grandfather. His acting out is an unexpected. He appears to be shifting that closeness to the nearest male relative, his older half-brother, and is acting out because Kian isn't fulfilling that expectation. Kids process grief very differently than adults do. Perhaps some more counseling to help Jaden deal with his loss would make his life easier. The counselor can help you support him too. Without fail, every time my 29 female husband, 37, wakes up in the middle of the night, he wakes me fully up to ask me what time it is. Both of us sleep with our cell phones charging next to our beds, so it's just as easy for him to reach out and check the time on his own phone as it is for him to wake me up and ask me. My husband says I'm being an idiot because I'm making a big deal out of nothing. But I say waking me up for something meaningless that he can do for himself with less effort than he expends asking me shows a complete disregard for me and is really selfish of him. Now, I know you're going to say I'm making a huge deal out of nothing, but it's not like this is a sometimes thing. He does it often, several times a week. And when he does it, it always takes me forever to fall back asleep. We both work full-time jobs and have an infant. I do 100% of the nighttime baby duties because my husband commutes farther than I do, so he says it just makes sense for me to let him sleep since he has to be out the door before I do in the mornings. I need to be clear, I'm not complaining if he wakes me up due to the baby needing me. I wake up to his cries, I don't think my husband even hears it. My complaint is that he wakes me up to ask me what time it is. I feel he's being selfish, but sometimes I just want to sleep too. Anyway. Am I the idiot for complaining and telling my husband to cut it out, or is he being needlessly insensitive to my needs? Not the idiot, but what is wrong with your husband? You are completely correct. This is inconsiderate and selfish of your husband to wake you up to ask the time, and it's poor parenting and marital behavior to dump all the nighttime parenting on you. Is he this selfish in other aspects of your lives? Exactly, OP, your husband is a huge idiot. Please explain to me why, if you both work full-time, you take care of the baby all night, every night. I was a stay-at-home mom with my baby and I was on a night feeding schedule and my husband was in charge of diaper changes. Do you really think your husband would be in charge of nighttime baby duties if your commute was longer? Let me answer for you. No. Wake him up whenever the baby cries and ask if the baby is crying. Let's see how he likes it. You are a kinder person than me because if someone were destroying my already limited sleep like this, my retaliation would be a lot worse than waking them up in return. She's already getting so little sleep because she's doing all the baby duties and he's taking even more sleep from her. Sleep deprivation is a form of torture when it's extreme enough. 
He's even got her convinced she's overreacting when, in my opinion, she's underreacting. Alternatively, you can turn on the flashlight on your phone and shine it in his face when he wakes you up to ask what time it is. Is he incapable of reading a clock independently? If not, this is controlling behavior. You've asked him to stop for many valid reasons, and he continues to do so selfishly. This is a big deal, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I would consider divorce over this. My 38 male girlfriend, 38, and I went out to lunch with my daughter, 18. My daughter told me previously that she could have sworn that she'd seen my girlfriend take cash away from the table after I'd tipped and everyone else was heading out and not paying attention. I felt like I needed to give my girlfriend, of a year, whom I'm madly in love with, the benefit of the doubt since I've never noticed her doing that. There's also been an instant where my girlfriend's sister apologized for her to a flight attendant and my daughter construed her behavior as being nitpicky and dismissive. I think my girlfriend was just stressed from work. We were at a place where servers are known for quick and attentive service. I wanted to show them I was grateful for their professionalism, so I wrote down a $65 tip on the tab and brought cash because I know servers prefer cash tips. My girlfriend said she was going to the restroom, and I said I'd go get our car from the valet. My daughter lingered near the entrance, and then when I get the car, I found her arguing with my girlfriend. She told me she caught her swiping 55 bucks off the table and walking away, and the other diner saw it too. She started saying, shame on you, didn't you used to be a waitress? My girlfriend snapped back that she did, then worked her way up and never was entitled. She handed me back the cash and said the tip was excessive. An upscale restaurant didn't mean the server deserves more. My daughter demanded that one of us go back to tip the waitress enough. I told her that I was sure that we'd already made a small scene, so let's just go. I didn't want to go back and embarrass my girlfriend and make people wonder why there were drastic changes in the tip. So, I just told my daughter that she could have tipped in her place back there. She works as an ACT tutor for classmates, but what's done is done. I don't feel great about it because the waitress seemed to have had only three tables in the two plus hours we were there, but I didn't want to make things worse for my girlfriend, who I hope if she dines here again, will just tip more next time. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. You essentially chose saving face for your girlfriend over your daughter's wishes and to do right by the waitress. Unfortunately, it sounds like your girlfriend has shown her true colors multiple times and you've chosen to ignore it even when your own daughter has brought it to your attention. He is essentially showing his daughter that he supports stealing and hasn't even really acknowledged he didn't believe his daughter in the first place. I hope this trash girlfriend is worth losing his daughter's respect. If I was his daughter, I'd be so damn disappointed in my dad. But the daughter should somehow cover for his girlfriend because she tutors. Your daughter did not deserve that and you still had your stealing girlfriend's back even after you saw your daughter was right about her. Have you even apologized to your daughter? Yep, when he said that, I couldn't help but think that OP is exactly the kind of person he deserves. An idiot. Instead of OP demanding that the girlfriend put the money back or give it to him so he could give it to the server, he acts like his teenage daughter should foot the cost of the theft. Also, I bet my car that the girlfriend was just going to pocket the cash before getting called out. Any decent person wouldn't want to be with someone that treats hospitality people like crap, and this is the third time that we know of. The girlfriend was basically stealing from her boyfriend too. Let's not forget that. It was his cash originally that paid the tip. If she's willing to steal money right out from under a waitstaff and her boyfriend, I wouldn't be surprised if she's stealing from other places right under her boyfriend's nose. I've had a long-term engagement with my fiancé. I got engaged December 2019. We were supposed to get married in 2021, but you can understand why that couldn't happen. So our wedding happened this past weekend. One of my best friends was supposed to attend as a bridesmaid, but she skipped the last minute because of an emergency. To be honest, I was mad she skipped because the emergency happened almost a week ago, so she had time to figure things out and attend. So what happened was that her fiancé got into a car accident and was hospitalized. He was hospitalized for five days, and on Friday, he got discharged to go home. My friend had told me from the moment he got into the accident that she'll skip the wedding just to be sure, and I told her we'd see. So when I saw that he got discharged on Friday, I expected my friend to show up at the wedding after all since his situation is not as dangerous right now and I texted her but she said that she'd not be able to make it. She kept saying how he's still not well and being discharged doesn't mean he can stay alone without care for many hours 
and since my wedding day would start at 9am on Saturday with the preparations, etc., the ceremony would be at 7pm on Saturday evening, and the reception and party would last until Sunday morning hours, she couldn't be away from home for that long, and she said she could compromise if she could only attend the ceremony. I said I don't want her there just for the ceremony, and she's a bridesmaid and supposed to be by my side the entire time. I also said that she could find him some care for the day so she could freely attend the wedding, and I suggested inviting either her parents or a friend to stay with him for that day. His parents live far away. She said it's not the same, and she won't feel right being out for the entire day. I got pretty upset because she seemed to totally disregard my wedding after so long making preparations, and while I understood it was her fiancé, I was mad she didn't find a compromise to attend. She claims her compromise would be to just attend the ceremony and then go home again, but she's a bridesmaid. It would be pointless if she's not there for the full experience. She said I'm an idiot for making her feel guilty about caring for her hurt fiancé, and she said that his situation takes priority over my wedding. She said she's not sorry for prioritizing her SO's health over me at this point, and if I was a good friend, I'd understand instead of guilt-tripping her that I'd better not complain if I'm ever in a difficult situation and I need my husband's help and support, and he chooses to attend someone's wedding over caring for his wife. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot and a terrible friend. I think you've lost this friend forever, and rightly so. Just because her fiancé has been discharged, it doesn't mean he's fully healed and fit as a fiddle. It just means he doesn't need hospital care and observation round the clock. On the other hand, the fact that they kept him in for five days means his injuries were pretty severe. It must have been a massive shock to your friend, too, thinking there was a possibility she may lose her fiancé. Her mental state will have had quite the shock, as will that of other family and friends. And here you are making it all about you. Poor little you, so hard done by as you are now a bridesmaid short. So give your head a wobble and have a word with yourself. She gave you plenty of notice, you just didn't accept it. She told you she wouldn't make the wedding and you said we would see. Who does that? Your wedding is not as important as the care of her fiancé. You're way out of line and owe her an apology. What an awful friend you are. You are the idiot for asking her to abandon her partner when he's sick, so then you can marry yours in sickness and in health. Or did you exclude that part of your vows?